Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about something that needs to happen in our mindset when people go from being a novice lifter to an intermediate lifter. And a lot of that has to do with stuff that, that I've spoken with my clients about and things that they've noticed when we start talking about exercises and tools and how we can understand that at a certain point, an exercise or a tool is phenomenal, it's great, it can carry you a really, really long way, but when you use it exclusively, you will eventually stall and it will actually become a really, really bad tool. And a lot of it could be anything from some of the more advanced or intermediate things, like you see me doing some speed bench there, and, and I mean, I will be the first to say, and many elite lifters think the speed bench is great for explosive strength. A lot of them think it's great for hypertrophy, but if it's the only thing you did to train your bench press or the only thing you did to train your chest ever, it would actually be really bad, right? It's something that has to be used as uh, in an assortment of things. And it's the same thing with different accessory movements or main movements. And, it, and this is a hard thing to get around because what is it that we always tell novice lifters? Focus on the basics. Focus on the basics. Master the basics. Because usually what happens with a novice lifter, we kind of have to beat into their head that you don't need 37 different exercises. In fact, that's why most of them spin their wheels, right? How many people out there have never built a base? They've been going to the gym three years. Look at some of these studies. Look at how small and weak a lot of lifters are in studies who claim to have two years, three years, four years of training experience. But then you look at them and their their fat-free mass They'll be five foot eight, five foot nine with a fat free mass of 140 pounds. Okay. They haven't finished out their new gains. These people have not put on 20 pounds of solid muscle yet. Right? Not from their training. They'll have a bench press that's 200 pounds for a couple of reps. They might squat 225. How often do you see that? These people didn't focus on the basics. They didn't master the basics. They went too crazy with just using random stuff and bro splits and all these other things. And what we find is that if we teach the novice lifter to focus on the basics and to use very few exercises and really, really master a number of key lifts, we don't tell them they can't do anything else, right? You don't want to tell a novice they can't do some curls if they want to do some curls, okay? We could argue that the curls aren't going to do anything for them or they might do very, very little. But we don't want to tell them not to do them if they really want to do them or they believe in their mind that it's going to help, right? Let them do their curls, right? Let them do their side laterals. Not the end of the world. But they need to focus on the basics and they need to be looking in terms of not what's the best lift for a job. That's not what I mean here. They need to be looking at what's the best lift to put the most muscle and strength on me possible in this first year. That's the reason a lot of exercises are selected. That's a reason we tell people a squat is better than a leg press. In fact, we'd even say that a back squat is better than a front squat. So reason a row or a pull-up is better than a lat pull-down. Reason a bench press is better than a chest fly. All right, there's reasons for this stuff. We pick these big movements because they're going to put the most size and the most strength on that person through their entire body. And they're going to teach them better body coordination, and it's going to carry over to a lot of other things. They're going to get a lot bigger and a lot stronger and build a better base all the way around if they do. But what happens when they get intermediate? All my intermediate lifters, again, a lot of the guys I coach are like, man, I, I, I took that mantra to heart, and I focused on the basics. And nothing but the basics, and I got pretty far. I mean, I've put on 15, 16 pounds of solid muscle. I got my squat up to 300 for reps. I can bench 400, 405 for reps. And I, I've got multiple clients like that. And, like, and then I spun my wheels for a year. Because they bought into what a novice lifter needs to know. And then when you get more advanced, what happened? The mindset changes and you realize you can't do just the basics. Now, you can do a lot of basic exercises, but you have to add some other supplemental lifts in. You actually have to address your weak points. And we kind of come back to that other point. We tell novices they don't have weak points. Well, intermediates do have weak points. And if intermediates don't address their weak points, they may spend their wheels for a year straight, even on their big lifts. 
they have to start incorporating other tools. Start incorporating other tools. What happens when we get even more advanced? See me standing there, I'm doing those tricep rollouts right there. Is that even the first small tricep exercise you've seen me guys work on long term this year? No. It's a really, really, really good one. I've done other tricep stuff. And here's at the point we get to. Now we start looking at, once you're no longer a novice, you have to think in terms of what is the best tool right now for a job? What's a really good tool? But what happens? What do you see people ask? Because you have people on the, the hardcore super bro end who think they need everything but the kitchen sink. They need 12 different exercises. They And five of them need to be five different cable angles for every muscle. And they think they have to bring a muscle up. And that doesn't work unless you're using a bunch of stuff. All right. But then the other extreme people who, who grasp the concept of mastering stuff, they go, well, what's the best exercise for my triceps? What's the best exercise supplemental lift to bring up my bench press? Well, we might look at them and say, I don't know. Is, is there a best? The best is the one that gives you what you need right now and you can recover from without overuse injuries. But what happens if you just do just the best exercise only? Let's say you pick one tricep exercise and never do anything else for years on end. What starts happening? You start accumulating overuse injuries, tendonitis. What happens when you pick your one best exercise? Let's say you figure out that for you the floor press carries over to your bench press perfectly. And when your floor press goes up, your bench press goes up. And you use it faithfully for months and your bench starts climbing again. And then your floor press stalls and your bench press stalls. And all you have is that tool available and that's all you do. You don't use anything else. Well, that tool no longer works. That tool that seems to be the best tool for the job does eventually stall, doesn't it? And you need to use to incorporate some other tools. And it may not be even an exercise. It might be, need to be a programming difference. We could, we could argue that uh, that's its own set of tool. Maybe an exact set and rep protocol works amazingly well for a while until it doesn't. And then we stall. And I'm not saying that we need to change things randomly. It's not about muscle confusion. It's about programming progression. And at the end of the day, people have to remember for all these different roles, no matter what your exact goals are, and I'm going to assume most people's goals out there involve getting gaining muscle or gaining strength. That's going to be part of it no matter what. And yes, those go hand in hand. They're not going to be uh, mutually exclusive. You can't separate them completely. There'll always be a large degree of overlap between those two. You're going to have to use different tools. The more advanced you get, the more different tools you're going to have to use. And it's that we run into this, this big, complicated mess with that, don't we? Because the novice lifter sees the advanced lifter who's excelling do that, and they think, aha, that's the secret. And then they try to do that, and they use way too many tools without mastering anything, instead of realizing that the advanced lifters have already built their base for years on the basics. The advanced lifters have to use these other tools to keep from stalling on the basics. They have to use these other tools so that they can add sometimes 5 or 10 pounds to a basic lift in the next year. And they need five different tools to get there just to achieve that. So they get caught up in seeing that, and then we can go in the other direction too, can't we? We can stay too dogmatic with, oh, there's a best tool for every job. One tool, one tool only, that's all I will ever need for the rest of my life. And as long as I do that, I'll keep making progress. And then all of a sudden you're stuck at a 450 deadlift and your, your 17 pounds of muscle growth that you gained, and that's it. You don't go any further. Now, you might not have gotten there at all had you not focused on those basics and used those tools effectively and, and, and mastered them. But there comes a point where we have to use different tools. And the more advanced you get as a lifter, the more tools that you need to have available in your toolbox. The only problem we have with this is understanding that there's that continuum and when people misunderstand what category they're in. 
when a novice lifter thinks they're an intermediate or an advanced lifter, or an advanced lifter or an intermediate lifter tries to think like a novice lifter, that's when we run into problems. You have to learn to separate these things and understand the different roles and the amount of focus you need and the number of tools that you need in your toolbox based upon your experience level. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.